On this week's Rebel Report, we have Mountain West basketball, and we give you a look at Las Vegas' role in the NCAA tournament with multiple conference tournaments in town the week prior. And we bring back a special segment that gives you a different perspective on a current run in Rebel. We also play a household game with one of UNLV's top freshmen. Catch this and much more on the Rebel Report. Welcome back to the Rebel Report. This is our second show for season seven, and as usual, we are stacked with stories, including an up-close look at the UNLV basketball teams as they play in the Mountain West Tournament. I'm Erin O'Hara. And I'm Lydia Vasquez. We're gonna start with the Lady Rebels and later in the show, play a game of horse with one of the running Rebels guards, Bryce Hamilton. The Lady Rebels are opening the 2019 Air Force Reserve Women's Mountain West Championship quarterfinals, looking to take home the W against Fresno State. Their record against Fresno is 0-3. Marco Santander has more on their game and finds out if they were able to take home the W. The Lady Rebels entering the Mountain West Tournament as fifth seed as they're looking to end their losing streak against Fresno State. Meeting for the fourth time in the tournament, the Lady Rebels starting the first quarter with the lead, but it wouldn't last long as Fresno State would carry it throughout all four quarters. As the Lady Rebels getting closer to tie the game, Fresno State would go on a scoring run, making it hard to bounce back. I mean, yeah, it's frustrating, but in a game you got to keep your head up and just wait for the next play, next play. And I feel like we did that, and we just fell a little short. Despite UNLV having more of a three-point shooting average, Fresno State's defense was the key to keeping them ahead. I think in the first half, uh, from the start of the game, we might have had a little trouble with it, but I felt like we actually adjusted to it. It definitely takes some seconds off the shot clock, but um, I felt like we did adjust to it as the game went on, and we expected it. We knew it was coming, uh, but I think we could have been a little more aggressive towards it. UNLV ending the game with 22 turnovers, close to double the amount of Fresno, making it harder to keep up. Coming off the Colorado State game, I felt like we did really well with turnovers in that game and controlling them and having low turnovers. So um, it was kind of upsetting to come in this game. We felt like we were prepared coming in for the press, so we definitely know that they do it. They do it every game. Uh, but yeah, I feel like we just made some lazy passes and uh, we weren't, you know, um, just executing like we should have. The pain being dominated by Fresno, it was something that was not expected. They, you know, they played a lot of zone, and I mean, they're smart with that. And I thought we attacked the basket and got some good looks, but um, we just never could get on a roll. You know, it never got any rhythm on the offensive end. Uh, you can't miss your free throws and then get these offensive rebounds and not do anything with the offensive rebounds. And for us... It just doesn't work like that. This being the last college basketball game for six seniors, it's a bittersweet moment, but the team looks at it from another perspective. My experience was great. Uh, after I transferred, I was welcomed by the coaches. They're great people, and the people that you meet are the people that are coaching. They're great people, and I'm just happy to play for them. We're just going to look at everything that we've accomplished, and uh, we think that we have brought this program up, and we're now handing it off to the underclassmen, and uh, we're handing it off better than I think when we got here. So that was the goal, and we're just going to uh, take that. With this win, Fresno State is 4-0 against the Lady Rebels in the Mountain West Tournament. For the Rubber Report, I'm Marco Santander. Senior Katie Powell was the only Lady Rebel in double figures with 17 points. While the Lady Rebels may have been given a quick exit to the conference tournament, UNLV junior Rajane Wade claimed the title of Mountain West Women's Basketball Sixth Player of the Year. Here's more on how she became the first Lady Rebel to reach that achievement. <laughs> Better known as RJ, Lady Rebel Jr. is a force to be reckoned with. Fresno native recently claimed the title of Mountain West Women's Basketball Sixth Player of the Year, making her the first of the Lady Rebels to claim that title. Here are her remarks regarding her season and the Mountain West Conference. Or, I mean, RJ, you know, when she came in this program, if you if you would have saw what we were working with, I mean, she's a great, great girl. She's a hard worker. But Coach Collier really developed her. I mean, our coaches do a great job of skill development. I'm super, super proud of her. 
I said early in the year, you know, you're playing behind Paris, you're playing behind Katie, two really talented post players. You've learned a lot. When you get in there, do some damage. And I thought all season she did a great job. She just made things happen immediately when she came in the game. Um, she's got to do a little better job of not turning the ball over as much, but otherwise you got to give it up for RJ. We're, we're really excited how much better she's gotten in our program. RJ is a great leader on her team and inspiration for future Lady Rebels. For Rebel Report, I'm Ivy Rose. Wade also recorded two double-doubles and three double-figure games in both scoring and rebounding in the Mountain West play. Here at the Rebel Report, we try to go above and beyond to talk to athletes. Our very own Jafar Robso brings back a special segment with the Run and Rebels starting point guard Noah Rebotham before the Run and Rebels take on San Diego State in the quarterfinals of the Mountain West Conference Tournament. I'm with Noah Rebotham and we're going to do a 94 feet. Noah is the starting point guard for UNLV's Rebels team. But UNLV's got a chance to win it. Three. It's good! Oh my goodness! So kind of walk me through your day-to-day. Day-to-day, uh, -day, uh, get up, uh, head to school, have breakfast. Um, I probably got classes in the morning. After uh, class, head to practice, uh, get shots after practice, come back at night, get shots up, do homework, just, you know, typical college athlete. So a typical college athlete, you know, you have a strict diet, but is there like something you kind of get away with and your coaches don't know about? Uh, you know, I try to stay away from fast food and soda. Um, I think I have an In-N-Out burger every now and then. Um, so that's probably my favorite thing. In-N-Out, maybe Canes if I'm really feeling a cheat day, but stay away from candy, soda, donuts, all that stuff. Okay, is there anything outside of basketball that you'd like to do? Yeah, I'm a big movie buff. I love movies. Okay. Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio is my favorite actor. Okay. So anything he's in, uh, I'm probably going to watch or uh, play the game. I'm a big 2K guy. Okay. Uh, easily the best guy on the team. So best Leonardo DiCaprio movie? Ooh, I'm going to go with The Departed. That's my favorite the movie, Departed. so I got to go with uh, The Departed. Okay, and that's 94 feet. That's really interesting that he rarely eats in and out. I only wish I had that type of self-control. The Lady Rebels and the Runnin' Rebels are going up against 10 top schools in the Mountain West Conference. Megan Platt broke down both teams' advantages and disadvantages. The Runnin' Rebels and the Lady Rebels had an exciting run for their season this year. Let's take a look. The Lady Rebels averaged 59.6 points per game, which is slightly below the college women's average of 60.9. They average a little over 21 field goals per game. The average field goal in general for women's college basketball is slightly over 38 field goals. So the ladies need to improve on this statistic. Of their 21 field goals, only four are three pointers. As far as free throws go, the Lady Rebels have managed to average 12. Defensively, the Lady Rebels total around 38 rebounds per game. They have blocked 74 shots and have made 220 steals this year. On the court, the Run Rebels average 74 points per game. They shoot an average of 26 field goals, which is an area of improvement for the Rebels. The average field goal per game for college basketball teams is 48%. Outside of the arc, eight three-pointers per game for the Rebels is normal. As far as free throws, the Red and Rebels have averaged 14 per game. Defensively, the Run and Rebels rebound 38 shots per game. They have managed to block a total of 109 shots and have made 178 steals this year. The Lady Rebels and the Run and Rebels have some places to improve before the Mountain West Tournament. For the Rebel Report, this is Coach Tarkanian and I'm Megan Platt. 
Thanks, Megan. The Runnin' Rebels are the fifth seed and have earned a first round bye. The Lady Rebels season ends in the quarterfinals of the Mountain West Conference. It's time to start filling out your brackets with your favorite college team. The city of Las Vegas is preparing for one of the busiest times of the year. Marco Santander has more on how they're preparing for it. The stakes are higher in March, especially in Vegas casinos, with thousands of people coming to the entertainment capital of the world just to bet on March Madness. During March Madness, the Las Vegas Strip transforms into one of the world's largest viewing parties with more than 3.5 million visitors coming to watch the games. Uh, this year we're definitely prepping for more people to be in Las Vegas itself. Uh, the Mountain West Conference is here at Thomas and Mac. Um, and there's going to be a flood of people. We are expecting the wind to be at 99% for the entire month of March. With many bettors flooding into sportsbooks, Sarah Keenan, a lead cocktail server at the Wynn Hotel and Casino, is preparing for the business of the upcoming weeks. We are definitely doubling up on all of our staff. Cocktail servers, security, bartenders, um, anywhere that we can double up on keeping the hotel safe while all these people are coming through, we are doing. Sports betting brought in more than $250 million in 2018 and is expected to grow in 2019 with the use of mobile apps. Jacqueline Taylor is a sports activation specialist with MGM Resorts International, and she's using this new technology to continue to bring more sports bettors to the casinos. March Madness is like crazy here, as the title says, because they're the ones that are going to be coming into town, placing their bets, and just kind of really getting into March Madness. And so we want to bring those guys in and especially the people who have like M Life rewards cards, they get a special cue at the sports book because they can like place their bets faster. And for playing GM, that's like online, so then it's just like at your fingertips. Along with placing bets, tourists will be spending money on food and shows during their time in Las Vegas, bringing in even more money to the local economy. March means basketball as Las Vegas sports books prepare for all the madness. For the Rebel Report, I'm Marco Santander. Lydia, can you guess the major casinos that tourists will be heading to during March Madness? I mean, I can try. How about MGM, Mandalay Bay, and the Luxor? Anyone can guess that. You got it. For now, we'll toss it to Kaylin for the Rebel Report timeout. Rebel Report timeout. Thank you, Lydia. Today, we have very, two very special guests, Chris Wynn and Clay Baker. And... Um, Clay Baker from ESPN Las Vegas and Chris Wynn who is a contributor to the Vegas Take. So tell us a little about yourselves if you will. Well, let's see, I, uh, I moved to Vegas like 20 years ago. I came from Michigan State where I studied failure and I uh, decided Las <laughs> Vegas would be a perfect spot to continue that work as I you know, continue to embarrass my family on ESPN radio for no money. Chris? I had a chance to, I had a chance to move to Las Vegas in, the, in 2004 and uh, it, was a, it was a great move. I actually moved here from Orlando, Florida. So uh, going, from, going from one destination city to another, of course, you know, and coming out here. Most serial to, killers do. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, got a chance to jump into sports radio about a, de you know, a decade plus ago and uh, continue to roll strong and uh, enjoy myself out here. So it's, uh, it's been a good experience, I have to say. So talking about sports, um, we're recording this show before the Rowing Rebels uh, game in the conference tournament. Mm -hmm. But... Um, they're 11 7 in conference play this season, and that's the first time they actually have a winning record in five years right. in, Dave, in midst of the Dave Rice era. Mm -hmm. uh, can you talk to us about the success of it, of this season? It was hard to find like success early on because you wondered how was this team going to progress with uh, Noah Rabotham at point guard, you know, the, the pro young prodigal son coming back to Las Vegas. But it took a little while. It didn't take very long because I think the greatness of Marvin Menzies is that people fall in love with him when, when uh, his teammates love him. And they actually get, became very bonded as a family. And by halfway through the uh, conference schedule, you know what, they found an identity. But it might be a little too little too late as they approach the tournament. It was a big roster turnover, really, from last year. Of course, last year you had a, a McDonald's All-American and Brandon McCoy. You had, you know, Johnson, the point guard, was a, was a key player for them. And obviously, uh, it was basically the emergence of, uh, of uh, Shakir Houston as well, too, last year. Yeah. This year, obviously, Clay mentioned, of course, uh, Noah Rabotham uh, coming in as a transfer, as a senior, and really kind of taking over that leadership role for the team this year. So. Uh, when you have a roster turnover like that, you're going to have some in inconsistency early on, which is what they had. And of course, uh, you know they're, they're able to kind of weather that storm. And uh, as Caitlin, as you pointed out, you know had had a, a quality record 
in the conference. Uh, the issue, of course, being though, the conference isn't exactly one of the top in the country. So I think you get kind of uh, you get you get kind of bogged down by that. And uh, but still, that being said, we'll see what, they, we'll, they'll, what they'll be able to do here in the Mountain West tournament as they go up against uh, San Diego State today. And as you were talking about the Mountain West tournament as they're going against San Diego State, mm -hmm. um, I know you know we lost to San Diego State twice this season, but I know as a whole the tournament. Uh, can you talk about the tournament and who you think is the lead dog? Because Utah State is coming in as a one seed. I'd like to watch how Utah State performs uh, because they had a chance to uh, beat Reno at home. And now Reno's coming in with like a certain kind of chip on their shoulder. It's like a collision course for both two teams to go and face each other. However, uh, you know, you, you want to see UNLV to play to, you know, to a maximum where they can go and get something mm -hmm. out of this. But I have a feeling it's going to be that classic showdown on Saturday night. And that would be great for the conference because the conference has been so down. But if Utah State could pull out that win, that means they get another at-large bid, which pushes uh, maybe like NC State or somebody else out. Yeah. We saw, of course, the, uh, the extracurricular activity, I guess, is a way to describe it, between Utah State and Nevada or in, in the last matchup between those two teams. Bad blood. Of course, Utah State got the victory. I think it does add a little bit of juice to this, to this, uh, to this Mountain West tournament. As far as UNLV, look, it's going to be about it's going to be about getting the ball rolling, right? For, for, the, for the Rebels, the running Rebels, you want to be able to make shots. That's a key. If they're able to knock down the three and, and get the offense rolling, then they're a very dangerous team. They can beat anybody in this tournament, including Nevada. So I think you, you have to look at it realistically. Nevada is probably the team to beat with uh, Utah State right there on, on, their, on their backside. But uh, there, there are some other teams, whether it be Fresno State, whether it be UNLV, some others that can make some noise in this tournament. Great. And um, we, thank you for appearing on today's Rebel Report timeout. And I'll send it over to Lydia with this week's Rebel Report uh, panel. Today in studio, it's Ivy Rose hosting panel discussion instead of Lydia, and I have with me Diamond Williams, Emily Perez, and Marco Santander. On today's topics, we'll be discussing the Mountain West Conference, women's basketball, and the Golden Knights, of course. First question is going to go to Miss Diamond. How do you feel the women's basketball team, the Lady Rebels, did within the Mountain West Conference, especially with the loss to Fresno? I definitely think uh, it went below my expectations just because they won Mountain West last year and then this year they're under 500. So, and then, so it's just unacceptable because with them being in the NCAA tournament last year, you would just expect them to be in it again, but that didn't happen. So, definitely kind of a disappointment. Okay, yeah, definitely understandable. Mm -hmm. And bouncing off of that, Emily, Rajane Wade, right? She won the Mountain West Women's Conference first um, Ladies Sixth Player of the Year. Do you feel like she was deserving of that or maybe it should have gone to another player? No, absolutely. Um, RJ deserved that one. Mm -hmm. um, we saw in Mountain West play, she was posting career highs with um, 8.5 points and 6.2 rebounds. And not only that, she is one of the top rebounders of her team and one of the top offensive rebounders in the entire league. So we saw one of her best games against San Jose State yes. um, just last month, and she grabbed 20 points and 14 rebounds. Wow. And so, you know, there's no doubt that we've been seeing her best work on the court. So for sure, she deserved that one. Definitely. I agree. She's a very hardworking player and sometimes overlooked. And going off the script um, with the Golden Knights, Marco, how do you feel about Mark Stone's acquisition of the team? I feel like Mark Stone con is contributing a lot morally, at least for now. He is coming from Ottawa, so it's a, diff a different play style than what Coach Gallant wants. Mm -hmm. He has to adjust to everything. You know, it's, it's just a new, a whole new system. So when he came, the um, record, they were winning, they had a, ever since Max came to the team, the team was five and zero. Oh. Mm -hmm. They lost their last game, but he, I feel like becoming the most, the highest paid player on the team definitely puts a lot of pressure on him. But then again, it boosts up their morality. Okay, that's an awesome answer. All of you had awesome answers. I think that's great for today's show, and we're going to wrap up panel discussion. Hailing from Pasadena, California, freshman guard Bryce Hamilton is enjoying his time here at UNLV. Isaiah Torres got to talk to him ahead of the Mountain West Conference Tournament while also playing a game of horse. What's going on, guys? Isaiah Torres here. I'm here with Bryce Hamilton, freshman for your Red and Rebels, and uh, we're about to play a game of horse. Hopefully this doesn't go too bad for me. 
But uh, let's have some fun. <laughs> Round the horn. Bryce Hamilton's back in. Three and Elmi. He's perfect on the night. He'll trigger and three point range. That's good. I'll just start with mid range. All That's right. how I warm up. Okay, okay. Oh, that's all. Oh. Uh oh. When you usually, you know, start warming up, where do you like to, to start first when uh, when you get on the court? I uh, usually just start short and, you know, work your way probably, up. Yep, work my way up to the three point line. So, um, you know, you're from Pasadena High School. Talk to me about it, man. Talk, let the people know about it. You know, obviously, a lot of people know it's, it's the home of the Rose Parade and stuff, but uh, well, what are some things that other people might not know about it? Uh, you know, it's a real nice city, you know. There's a lot of like celebrities that live out there. Real nice place. Uh, you know, Rose Bowl. We got the little Rose Parade on New Year's Eve. We got Old Town Pasadena where you can go shopping, have a lot of fun. Uh, and right to the trick shots? Uh, yeah, right there. <laughs> oh, man. Was it? <laughs> Was it right here? Yeah, yeah. Uh, this, yeah honestly, this is my, my, weakest, my weakest shot, man. I can never make this as a kid. I made it twice in my whole life. Oh, heck no. <laughs> uh, when it came to choosing to come here to UNLV, uh, what, what made you decide um, you know, this is where you wanted to go to school? Uh, you know, it just felt like home. You know, when I came here on a visit, everything just felt great, you know. Felt like the right place, you know. Coaching staff was real good. Got along with the teammates really well, so it was just perfect fit. I'll just shoot right here, shoot right here. All right. Short corner, little mid-range shots. Shot in the handles. Oh. Okay. All right. What oh. Oh, right, what was that? <laughs> what was that, HO? HO yep, for me? HO. Right. Do, you watch, do you watch some NBA? Um, you have to get to watch when in between games and practice in school and stuff? Uh, yep, I'm a LeBron fan, so uh, I go wherever LeBron goes, you know, but right now it's not looking so well for the Lakers. I like Kobe, you know, Jordan, James Harden. James Harden? A lot yeah. of KD, I like all of them, you know, you, pretty good players. You, you were number 13, is that because of Harden or? Yeah, that's pretty much because of James Harden. Knock me out with the range. Oh, no. That's hard. <laughs> no. Oh, get in there. Uh, Did that go out? <laughs> yeah. Wow. It played you that time. Hey, it played everyone you that watching time. this, you see it's almost in there, right? Like, <laughs> it's, oh man, that story of my life though. I'm a, I want my HOR right yeah, now. HOR, HOR. Oh man. Do you, have, do you have any nicknames or no? Cause like, I like to say you're like mini microwave. Cause like once you, once it goes in once, like, you're on a roll. Do you, did you ever come up with any nicknames growing up or? Uh, nah, I just pretty much everybody from my city and just everybody call me just B-Ham. B-Ham? Yeah. yeah I, mean, I like that too, B-Ham. Yeah. Oh, it's off. No. Ah, that's the S. That's S. Freshman here at UNLV. Uh, season's not, not over yet. You know, we're, we're in March now though. Uh, mm -hmm. Talk to me about um, March, Madness, March Madness memories, you know. Do you, any, do you have any memories like watching it? Like um, some favorite memories that, that stick out to you? Uh, yeah, this for sure. Like one of the best months of basketball. You know, there's just a lot of upsets going on. Just a lot of hype and just like real fun to watch. You know, I like watched like Loyola Chicago last year make a big run. And you know, I think this year we could really be that team that could, you know, shock everybody and just make that NCAA tournament. Ah. Uh. Oh. Wow. All right. All right, everyone out there. I never dunked in my life, but this is the day. <laughs> Man. You, you up there, you get uh, close, you hey, get close. You know what, I, I gained some pounds since I joined college, but, <laughs> but it happens, it happens, man. But hey, thank you, Bryce, I appreciate it, man. And, and good luck to you the rest of this season. And um, yeah, man, I'm looking forward to you doing big things for the school, you know, coming in sophomore next year and, and you know, the rest of your time here, man. So, everyone, this is Bryce Hamilton. I'm Isaiah Torres, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Bryce is currently averaging four and a half points this season for the Running Rebels, but is looking forward to playing a bigger role for the team next season. It's the end of a chapter for some of our Lady Rebels.
Diamond gives us an inside look of our Lady Rebels' special night as they celebrate the ending of their senior year. I am here at UNLV's women's basketball game as they take on Colorado State University. What's special about tonight? It's senior night! Let's take a look. of everyone it's the whole town comes out to our games and the camaraderie between me and my teammates is awesome the coaches really support us in every role of our lives so just everyone's support and encouragement is something really special about UNLV basketball taught you that carries over into other areas of your life? So much. Basketball is like a mini version of life. You face adversity, you have to overcome different obstacles, things like that. Working with other people, it all just life. That's a mini version of life right there. That's my plan. I want to be a doctor, maybe a pediatrician or dermatologist, so I'll keep my options open. I'm actually going to continue school, so I'm going to get my master's in business. Well, this is definitely not the end of the road for our senior Lady Rebels. It is just the beginning. From the Rebel Report, I'm Diamond Williams. Thank you, Diamond. We wish our senior Lady Rebels the absolute best with their futures post-graduation. Well, that's it for this week's edition of the Rebel Report. Be sure to stay tuned for our upcoming shows. You can catch up on our previous shows on our YouTube channel, Rebel Report UNLV. Also, tweet us if you have any sports stories for us at Rebel Report UNLV as well. And follow us on Instagram at Rebel Report underscore UNLV. See you guys next week.